morning to each and every one. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us this morning. At this time, let us all stand.
Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord and bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord, he is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord, he made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O we kindred of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto his name. Bring an offering, come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, and fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved, and he shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth, and he shall judge the world with righteousness, and the people with his truth. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the reading of his word. And this time, let us welcome to Sir John, and she bless our heart in the song this morning.
sisters, brothers and sisters, who are together, pray for one another, reach out for those who have been here and not here anymore, and bring them back into the fold, because we really don't have much time here. We know that Jesus is coming very soon. Amen. And this for whatever, I'm sure that that's going to the whole world with this COVID there, God, we pray that, you know, God will heal this land. And we are coming to the end of this, because we know that in his word, he promised to look over the whole wide world is in his hand. And nothing is difficult for my God to do. Amen. You know, so I thank him and I pray to him for health, strength, happiness, joy, peace, contentment, and most of all, a peace of mind. And I give him all the praise and the glory because he has been good. Amen. wonderful chorus declaring that he is the king of kings forever and ever. He is the king of
the Lord today. We welcome everyone, newcomers in the house. God bless you. And for those who are viewing online right now, here are some of our viewers. So at Suzanne Jacob, trust that all is well with you, our sister, and Joshua Paratam Singh and uh, his family miss you guys in the house this morning. But we're glad that we have the live so that you can participate also in the worship. Sally Rajkumar, God bless you, and uh, Simon Atherton, and all those that are locked on. God bless you, may have your seats. Praise the name of the Lord. Do we have any birthdays, any anniversaries in the house uh, today? Maybe you celebrated one this uh, past week, or perhaps even this week that is ahead of us. Uh, Sister Cynthia, your birthday is it today? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. We celebrate with you. God bless you. God bless you. Is anybody else celebrating a birthday? Just stand or lift your hand. Today. Today as well? Yesterday. Okay, yesterday was yours. All right, wonderful. This is a, this is Richard Sneeze. He's going to be coming a little bit and share with us a testimony. I'll tell you who he is, but God bless you. So we have two of the persons. Praise the Lord. Sister Cynthia, I heard that uh, you brought some things for us. Wonderful. Could, could you come? Come forward. Amen. Uh, before we sing happy birthday to you guys. I know you're excited about your birthday today and all that God is doing in your life. So just share with us uh, a word of testimony today. Indian tree. 
lovely sweet box praise of him so everybody's going to get a, a, a little of all of that oh god bless you you spent whole day yesterday making all this whole week oh this and if somebody takes whole week to make this that's a lot of love amen that yes wow Could you come as well and stand along Sister Cynthia? Will you come to testify? Oh, my bad. Yes. Praise the Lord. I don't know what a child's watching that. <laughs> <laughs> you all know why we are here, all right? He is the one that introduced us to the bad. When you come in and point science ministries, not only walk in a Bible, walk with a bad. Very often, very often, we have lots of food, lots of snacks, and so on. Amen. Well, you can see they're getting, um, you know, uh, familiarized in the family. Amen. Neighbors, glory to God. Happy birthday to you. Let's sing it out to them. Happy birthday to you. Jesus did for me. Amen. He came to me. 
the beautiful thing about Jesus, what he does, he breaks you to remake you. Amen. Yeah. The thing is, we all will experience what the Apostle Paul experienced on his way to the Damascus. We will all encounter, we will all have an encounter with Jesus. He seeks those that are lost. It says my man Luke 16, I can get it. He came to seek that was lost and we're here. We could have been to any other place we wanted to be in today, but we're here. God will remember that. God said, I love you, and I give my son to you. A ransom that was paid in full and blood shed for the remission of our sins. Not many is as lucky, or I should say blessed, like me, to have a second chance at life. I saw life from both sides of the fence. I saw death, and I saw eternal life. And my Lord said to me, you are not ready to come home. You've got to go back and finish the work that I started in you today. Yeah. Spread the good news. Yeah. Witness for me. As the Apostle Paul called to the Apostle to the Gentiles, he said to him, you would suffer for me. As you were persecuting my children, you will suffer for me. And all those that believe in Christ will suffer. Make no mistake about that. As long as you choose Christ, you're in for it. But here was the beautiful thing. I will always be with you, even until the end of the age. Amen. Whatever we face, all this thing going on with the pandemic and all that, that's only the devil that was trying to separate God's people. It was designed from the beginning, and it's coming to pass now. Has to be like this. As sister said earlier on, Jesus is coming soon. And all these things must come to pass. He must sit the nation to seek those that were lost who found their way to him. Amen. And I am thankful that I'm alive today because what God has done for me in my life. I've never been the same. When I walked into that hospital, my life had changed completely. God need to do this refreshing in the life of everyone that comes to him. He will do this as promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And come to me. I will in no way cast you out. We need to know that God gave his best to us that we can become his best. And he expects that from us. When we look at life, it's not like a few more minutes. Uh, just, just two more minutes, okay? I'm sorry, I do apologize, okay? Yeah. When we look at life in the Old Testament where God came down to the people, we are called to come to God. We are to go to God. To His Son, Jesus Christ. We can't go no other way. And I'm thankful to be here today to, you know, to this video of a little of my life. And I know there are good people here, there are wonderful people. I feel the, I feel the energy here. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. choir, like 3,000 people singing here. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful voices, you know, and beautiful church. Yes. And just one more thing, I'll just add to this real quick. I know Brother Larry, I should call him Brother Larry many years ago. When I walked into that church and asked him, he was the first guy that, that welcomed me there. Yeah. And, and you know what was that? This message to me that day, I don't know if you might be able to remember. Oh, I'm not going to remind you. Um, he told me, John 3 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's the scripture that Brother Nari gave to me yeah. when I walked into that church the first day of my life. That was a church in us. You yeah. told me about yeah. this morning. Yeah. 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 And I'm here today. I, I never realized I'd be the same guy. But I'm married. Look at this pastor now. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So one day, they leave the front door open on accident, and the young onion, he rolls out into the world. So while this onion, the young onion is crossing the street, our tragedy struck. He got hit. He got hit and he was flattened on the road. So he was rushed to the hospital and the father rolls around in the hall, extremely anxious to hear the news. So finally, after a long, grueling surgery, the doctor comes out and removes his mask, wipes the sweat from his brow, and calls the father onion over. He says, well, tell me, tell me doctor, what has happened to my baby boy? Will he live? I want to know. Well, the doctor Onion said, calm down, calm down, calm down. He, he will live, but unfortunately, he will be a vegetable for his entire life. Let's not let's let's start. Let's all start as a gift. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we will ask him run to lead us in, in prayer as we kick up today's collection. Last week, what a fantastic 
fantastic morning service and uh, Kennedy evening was a blast. Glory to God. Uh, so you are getting the opportunity uh, to hear the continuation of this wonderful message. Let's all read God's word together. It's on the screen if you choose to read. Uh, can you read with me now? Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So are men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, it even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Father, we thank you for this morning's message and all that have guided them to listen to the word and what a fantastic time of worship that we have had. And hearing that testimony that how you saved our brother Richardson and even through that coma, indeed that you were with him and you revealed yourself to him. Pray that you reveal your love to us, to us today, dear Father. And we pray that hearts will be open and receptive in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seeds. Oh, Valentine, and I'm talking now about Jesus Christ. Praise God. If you have never had a Valentine in your life, well, then I present to you the lover of your soul, Jesus. Nobody can love you as Jesus loved you. Amen, somebody? The greatest Valentine of the universe. Amen. It is Christ uh, our Savior. Look what he did. The Bible tells us he left heaven's glory. Yes, he got off his throne, his kingly throne. And Jesus laid down his royal robes. And he came to this sinful world. And now he was dressed in swaddling clothes. He was laid in a manger. And Jesus grew up as a man. And he gave his life for us on the cross of Calvary. He sacrificed himself. Why? Because he loves you. He is your special Valentine. He is your ultimate Valentine. Praise God. That is what Christ did for me. And I so appreciate it. You know, when someone does something like that, extraordinary, you cannot help but to love him. You cannot help but to serve him. I do not find it a bother or a difficulty to serve the Lord or to love the Lord. I find great pleasure in doing so. Because when I compare my service to his sacrifice, they cannot be compared at all. Amen. There is no amount of service that I could render to the Lord that could equate his great sacrifice. I may never be called to give my life as a martyr or to lay down my life for Jesus. But folks, I at least throughout my days and throughout my years, that I can love him and I can serve him the best that I can. I do that by serving his church. I do that by serving you this morning, praise God. I do that in my prayer time. I do that in my Bible study. I do that in telling others about Jesus Christ. This Valentine's Day, God, there were many flowers that were given. Yes, many cards um, that were shared. Jewelry, perhaps special gifts uh, also were given on Valentine's Day. Well, chocolates are very popular and perfumes as well. But as good as all these gifts are, there is, it cannot be compared uh, to what Christ gave us. 
us. He gave us his blood. He gave us his life as a clear token of his love. And this is what our text is saying. As one, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I mentioned to you about the different type of loves in the Greek. You have the filial love, the brotherly love, you have the eros, and that is the kind of um, uh, passionate love that, that people have, that physical love. But uh, the agape love of God goes beyond that because it calls for the ultimate sacrifice where a person is willing to give himself or herself um, yes sir uh, unreservedly to the one that they love amen and that's what god says marriage uh, should be a man loving a woman yes all the days of his life um, willing to do anything um, that it might cost uh, in, in order to take care in order to love his wife and to love his family. Maybe today your love for Christ uh, has been waning some. Maybe today you are not as passionate in your love uh, for Jesus. What God is saying to you all today and saying to me, we got to rekindle that passion. Yes, sir. We got to get that fire burning again. There was a young man and he said to his father one on breakfast one morning, he said, Dad, I am going to get married. And so, how do you know the dad says that you are ready for marriage? He says, are you in love? And the son said, yeah, I sure am in love. But the father said, well, how do you know you are in love? He says, well, I'll tell you what, Dad, last night, I had the great opportunity of kissing my girlfriend for the first time. And you know what? Her dog bit me and I didn't feel a single thing. No pain whatsoever until I got home. And so he said that's how he knows that he was uh, in love. Well, that might be an expression um, of infatuation uh, rather than love. Um, but what about you and your marriage today? How is your marriage? How is your relationship with your husband, with your wife, and with your spouse? It is said that marriages generally go stale after 25 years. One, uh, I have to say about a husband, he says, my husband and I don't talk much anymore. Unlike the first years of, of marriage, it is said in the first year of marriage, the man speaks uh, and the wife listens. Uh. In the second year, the woman speaks uh, and the man listens. Uh. But in the third year, they both speak uh, and the neighbors listen. <laughs> but the wife continues, she said, you know what, we used to talk. Yes, we used to talk. We used to talk about our kids. Uh. But they have grown up now and they have left the house. Uh. She said, I really don't have any major complaints with my husband, but the truth is, is that the old excitement, the passion has got. She said, now we watch a lot of television together, we read books, we have friends, but when we are alone, it is pretty dull. There is no fire. We even sleep now in separate bedrooms. And so she wants to know, is there any way that we can recapture the old magic? And she signed her name, the song has ended. That's how she signed her name. In other words, those feelings have gone. That's pretty sad. I don't think that anybody would come up to this altar and say we present ourselves in the bonds of all the matrimony and you would ever think that the passion and the fire that is presently there would ever go out. In fact, uh, what you are believing and hoping that it will be there till death do us pass. But again, statistics brings us to this reality. After 25 years, and still I think that they are pretty generous with that 25 years. Because sometimes uh, the passion and the flame goes out in 25 months. Just a couple of years and it goes out. But it's really sad. Maybe you have heard the old righteous brother's song. 
And I remember this, uh, you know, growing, I, I'm um, a 64, 1964 boy, so the 70s, uh, you know, uh, the songs, I, some of them I still remember, all the love songs and things that are moving up to the, to the 80s. But there's the Righteous Brother song and it says that you lost that loving feeling. Whoa, that loving feeling. You lost that loving feeling. And now it's gone, gone, gone. <laughs> Some of you might, might remember that tune right of like, is it coming back? No, you don't know that song. Oh, you mean the feeling and gone? Oh, yeah, Lord, and you're, you're, the boys going high points there now. High, high points. Amen. In the Reader's Digest, uh, reports that the number one question that people ask marriage counselors is what happened to these feelings? What has happened, counselor? Could you tell me what went wrong? Because we don't love each other the way that we used to love each other. And so what has happened to us? That is the question that people are asking today after being married for a number of years. And what do you do when your marriage loses its spark? What do you do when the fire is not burning as it used to do? Is there something that can be done? Or is it inevitable that all marriages are going to go through those things? Is it something that you cannot avoid that it is bound to happen again? Well, part of it is that marital satisfaction varies over the life of marriages. Hitting low spots, especially when uh, the kids now have grown up um, and they become teenagers. Uh, and so after the kids move out, um, things uh, begin to even get worse um, and deteriorate in the marriage. Uh, do you remember how much attention that you used to give your spouse uh, when you were recently married and just got married? Could you remember the hours that you talk on that phone when you were dating? Could you remember the notes that you wrote? Could you remember the dates that you had, the Friday night dates and, and so on? And you would go out of your way to make that woman, to make the girlfriend, yes, to make your valentine, or to make your wife, to make her happy. Well. It's simple. What you need to do is to start doing those things again. I want you to know that I am on top of my ball and game when it comes to dating. Because when I met Iva, immediately as I, I started to take her out on dates, I took her out on dates on Wednesday night, I took her out on dates on Sunday night, and I took out on dates on Sunday morning as well. And it went really, really good. To be frank with you, your parents would not have it any other way. We were not allowed uh, to go to uh, movies. We are not allowed to go to beaches. But we are allowed to go Wednesday night, Sunday night, and Sunday morning in church. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm on top of my, my ball, my game, because as you can see, I still date my wife. Every Wednesday night, every Sunday night, and every Sunday morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And now and then there's a little extra. Sure, we go by the beach and uh, go to other places as, as well. Amen. Hallelujah. But what you got to do is to return to some of those things. Praise God. A man was sitting uh, on the edge of his bed and he was observing his wife uh, looking at herself in the mirror. Since her birthday was not far off, he asked her, said, listen, sweetheart, what would you like for your birthday? And so on the, she said, you know what, sweetheart? This is my request for my birthday, is I would like to be six again. I would like to be six. She was looking at that mirror. So on the morning of her birthday, he rose up early, this husband, and he made a nice bowl of lucky charms and then took her to the theme park. Oh, what a day it was. He put on every 
right on that path. Um, yes, there was the death slide. She was on that. Uh, there was the wall of fear. She was on that. Um, the screaming monster roller coaster ride. In fact, every ride there was, uh, he put on that ride. Five hours later, no, they staggered out of the theme park. Her head was reeling, spinning. Her stomach felt upside down. And then he took her, later on, he took her to McDonald's where they had ordered that happy meal with extra fries and a chocolate shake. Then it was off to the movies. There was popcorn, there was a soda pop, there was a favorite candy, M&M's. What a fabulous adventure. So finally, she wobbled home with her husband and collapsed into bed exhausted. He leaned over to his wife with a big smile and lovingly asked, Well, there, how does it feel uh, to be six again? Her eyes slowly opened and her expression suddenly changed. She said to him, You idiot, I meant my dress size. <laughs> you know, women complain that their husband just don't listen to them and just don't understand them. Oh, I tell, I tell you, it's not, an, it's not an easy task, but bless the Lord for those of you, you can truly make your wife feel like she is six again. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. But you've got to give a boy credit. He tried. He met somebody. Yeah. Ladies, listen, you gotta, you got to appreciate when your husband is making an effort to do something special for you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you got to show that appreciation when he goes out, amen? When your loved ones try to, to do something for you, or maybe a meal and or sort of take you out, and, you know, buy something, try and be appreciative, rather than being critical and say, that is what you're going to cook, that is what you buy, bought me, I don't need that, and so on. It's always good to also to find out what they need, glory to God. This one at times, day I did something different. You know, usually we get up on the, the flowers and, and so on, and you know women always love flowers and, and you know, and, and chocolates and things like that. And, but um, I got something that my wife really wanted. She wanted, um, she wanted somebody to talk to her for Valentine's Day. She wanted somebody to sing to her on Valentine's Day. So after listening to all these things, I, 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 you know, I was trying to get the message. And so I think I finally got the message. She wants someone to talk to her, to sing to her. So I brought her a brand new radio. <laughs> I think she's pretty happy. And I'm pretty happy as well too. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But when last did you take your spouse out? Well, beside the supermarket, because some of you already bought pasta to get to the supermarket. What more can a man do? Pasta took her to the dentist. I took her out. What, can, what more can a man do? Well, the tornado hit a Kansas farmhouse just before dawn one morning. And it tore up the roof. And it picked up the bed in which the farmer and his wife were sleeping. By some miracle, the tornado set them down on hand. That's the next county over. The wife was sobbing uncontrollably. And um, he said to her, don't be scared, Martha. Don't be scared. We are, we are not good. Martha continued to cry nevertheless. And she said, I am not scared. And she says, listen, I am happy there, husband, because this is the first time that we have been out together in years. <laughs> Please don't let a tornado have to come to your way to lift you out and your bed and everything and take you out. All right? Take him out, glory to God. Amen. Be careful. Do not let the love die. Do not let the love grow cold. And it can happen. It can happen because of neglect. It can happen because we lose the appreciation. We lose the respect that we once have for each other. And this happens to us as believers in Christ as well. Is that we lose that love and that passion.
passion for Jesus. We lose that passion for fellowship. We lose the passion for prayer and for reading of the word of God. It becomes dull. It becomes a drag. No more is exciting. Remember the days that you were super excited when you were just born again. You can wait for fellowship. You can wait to get to the house of God. Remember those days that you didn't miss a single service. It didn't matter whether it be the Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday or in between. You just wanted to be there because why? You were deeply in love with Jesus. Hallelujah. There were no complaints then. No complaints about the time. No complaints about the weather. No complaints whatsoever at all about the singing or the preaching. You just wanted to be there because why? There was passion. Once there is passion, it overlooks the fault. Yes, once there is passion for Jesus, it overlooks the problems. It is not as big as it were if you lose it. Everything is a problem. I can tell you that. When you begin to lose the passion in marriage, you, you begin to find fault. Listen, when you begin to point your finger at each other in the marriage, uh, it's not necessarily of the, because of the fault. Because they were always there. This is the woman that you married. Look at her. This is the man that you married. It is not about the fault. Many a times it is because you have lost the spark. You have lost the fire. And that is why now it is becoming an issue. And when you see people begin, begin to find fault, it is not so much, listen, that there are faults. No, it is because they are losing out on the zeal, on the enthusiasm, and all these things become a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the same thing in church. When people begin to find fault about this and that in the church, and begin to make excuses about this and that in the church, the problem is not that the church has for There's always been. It is the same church. It has always been like that. The problem is these people are losing their passion. They are losing their joy. They are losing their love for Jesus Christ. And therefore, that is why you hear now the complaint and you hear the excuses it is because of that spiritual problem it is because of the problem yes you are losing your love for each each other in Revelation chapter 2 and verses 4 Jesus tells the church in Ephesus he says listen that you have fallen church you have fallen you have fallen out of love like a grieving husband Jesus said to the church listen you have lost your first love. And so you don't love me the way that you used to love me. This is what Christ is saying to the church. Yes, sir. the way that you took so much interest in me. The way that you worship me. You don't worship me that way anymore. You get tired. You get hung up uh, and so on and Jesus said to the church uh, he said listen I miss that I miss that pure love I miss that innocent love but all you are doing now is complaining and making excuses that's all you are doing and Jesus said to the church listen I miss uh, the day that we had so close of fellowship and there is a clear command that Jesus gave to the church he said to the church listen you got to repent. He says something like this. He says, I know that you are faithful. I know you have to wander or stray. I know that you have work. I know you are still holding up your end of the deal. But what is happening? You are just going through those motions. You are doing those things without passion. Yes, can I be a worker in the church? But I am not doing it for our passion and love. The spark, Jesus says, I know it. The spark in your eye is not there. The excitement in your voice, I don't hear it anymore. In your praises, that excitement is not there anymore. And Jesus says, listen, I miss those good old days. And so Jesus gives the remedy. Number one, he says uh, that you've got to remember. 
in Revelation 2 uh, and verses 5. He says, remember what it used to be like. Remember how sweet it used to be. Do you remember dating your spouse? Do you remember the sweet things that you did and said them? Because you were so much in love. Could you all remember that? Those of you who have been married for some time. Could you all remember how exciting it was? Yes, sir. When the time come that you will be able to go over. And to spend some time with that one that you love. There were no excuses. The weather was not a problem. I could tell you that for a fact. Where I believe, as you all know, is one of the most prone flooded areas in the country. And folks, I can remember the first car that I ever owned was a 1200 Datsun. A red 1200 Datsun. I ever spoke about that car so much. Oh yes. I, 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 but she spoke about me as well too. All right. But that car... Let me tell you something. It had holes. It had, it, you could say it was a holy car. Yeah. Yes, because a holy man was driving. Just like our church here, it's on a holy road because this is a holy church. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, when it rained, I could remember that I was so intentional about getting there. No flood would stop me. I remember one time, I tell you, I had to take my feet up and try to put it on that seat and let that kick that kind of gear and let it go because the water was flooding inside of that car. Did I complain about that? Of course not. I did not complain about that. It was not a problem at all. I drove through the flood in order to get to the one that I love. Hallelujah. I was tired. I never made an excuse that girl. I worked all I had. She didn't have to call me up on the phone and said, I am seeing you. It has been now days I am seeing you. It has been weeks I am seeing you. Where are you? And I'm on the phone and say, girl, well, you know I have uh, this job to do. I have to finish this job. I have to work late hours. So, you know, I mean, what, what to do? You know, you like your chocolates and you like your flowers. You think you're going to buy it. It's just like that. You, you know, you, you love those things. You think that they come just like that. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. She didn't have to call me up um, and, 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 and say to me, I am senior. Folks, I showed up at the door. Glory to God. Amen. I showed up at the door. Sunshine or rain. I was at that door. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because why? Because uh, this boy was in love. Amen. That's what you do when you're in love. You do not make excuses. Uh, what you do, you look for reasons. Amen. Why I can serve. Uh, reasons uh, why I should worship. Uh, reasons why I should make sacrifices. Glory to God. Uh, that's when the passion uh, is there. Amen. Uh, and God was saying, Jesus was saying to the church, uh, you've been doing some things. That's okay. But you have lost that passion. You have lost that love. So go back. And remember, the second thing he said to the church uh, was to repent. In same verses 5, uh, he said, listen, you got to repent. Uh, you got to change your mind. you got to change your direction. you got to realign the priorities of your life. Um, instead of having an adversarial uh, relationship, uh, instead of us being in conflict, uh, we got to be in harmony. Yes, that's how we got to be in the marriage. Is your marriage an adversarial marriage? Is there always bickering and fighting and complaining in your home? Does that characterize your relationship with your boyfriend and your girlfriend? You know, some people are even in court and wrong. They're always fighting. But that is a red flag right there. Listen, you need to step back and you need to check back that situation. Because is this how we're going to live for the rest of our lives? Is this, this we're going to be fighting with one another? We're going to be upset with one another? Is this is how it is going to be? 
So how is your marriage today? Is it always an argument? Is it always a misunderstanding? Is there on happiness? You make each other happy. You make each other mad. Is that how that your marriage is? What Jesus is saying, listen, you got to repent. You got to repent, church. You got to repent. If your relationship with Jesus right now is this, Jesus is saying, you got to repent. Decide and determine that I am going to foster a loving relationship. Jesus said earlier that you must repeat. Verses 5. Not only that we must uh, repent, uh, but we must also repeat. Uh, take your house again. This is what God is saying. Go the extra mile. Make the sacrifices, uh, the same traits uh, that cause you to love them uh, in the first place. Uh, you know how you went uh, all out uh, to win that person's heart. Uh, to win that person's love. You know what you did. Yes, so that person will fall in love with you. That person will want to get married to you. That person will want to share the rest of their lives with you. You know the things that you did. The efforts that you made. The messages that you sent. The words that you shared. The thoughtfulness. Yes, the gift giving. All you know what you did so that person will indeed fall in love with you this is what Christ is saying do the first words amen get back doing what you were doing in the first place glory to God we kindle the fire fall in love again praise God hold hands again one guy says the only time he holds his wife hand is in self-defense. But nevertheless, oh, another guy said, um, as you looked at another guy, he says, do you always hold your wife hand like that in the mall? We replied, yes, because if I let go, she only shops. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But the things that you did, amen, you got to stop. You can't take them. That relationship of granted. It grows stale when that happens. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what takes place in the marriage. It what takes place in the church as well. You find that there is staleness instead of freshness. The excitement has gone. What the Lord is saying, listen, repent. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Of that. Remember the days before and repeat. It, the things that you used to do as uh, I bow in prayer with you today because of time I'll have to stop the message right now but I would like us to examine ourselves as believers in Christ how is your love life with Jesus is it adversarial are you making excuses why do you have time to spend with the Lord anymore? Are you looking for reasons not to spend time with the Lord? Is that what it is that you have come to? Before, remember, you were looking for reasons that you could be with the Lord and you could be with His church and you could be with God's people fellowship. Yes, but now the opposite is happening. You're looking for reasons why you can't be there. Every excuse that you come up with, you are making it. The church has not changed and Christ has not changed. The truth is, you have changed. Unless you do not see that, you will never be restored. And you might be going through the motions for the rest of your life. Is that what you really want? And is that how you want Christ to find you when he comes just now? To find you so far away in your heart from him he does not see that passion he does not see you making sacrifices anymore for him you have just become so cold in your life as i've shared with you that one of the things that covid has brought on the church is coldness because when you get accustomed not fellowshipping 
after a while it does not bother you anymore. You can stay home and you'll be perfectly okay because what has happened is that you have put it off for so long, now it does not bother you. Same thing in a marriage relationship. If you begin to put off each other and take each other for granted, very soon it will become normal. We don't talk to each other, we don't do any, anything for each other special anymore again, and it's normal. And that's the way it will be for the rest of your life. It's not really sad. That's not what God wants today. He wants to restore that passion. He wants to restore that love. And if you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, you know what? I want to be in a close relationship with Jesus. I don't want to be in a far away or distant relationship. Because distant relationships just don't work. All right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This internet relationship can't work. <laughs> As I said, this online service is provided for those, amen, who really can't be here. Amen. It is not a substitute at, at all. No way. Glory to God. You want something better for that for yourself and for your family. Glory to God. Say, Pastor, I just want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Amen. Would you lift your hand and that describe to this morning? Praise the Lord. Say, Pastor, yes, I want to be in love with Jesus as I used to be when I was now born again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning and the way that you have spoken to our hearts, dear Lord, the second Sunday of Valentine's Day. Lord, we just bless you, dear Lord, for the way that you reached out to us. You reached out in such a sacrificial way. There is no doubt in our hearts. Nobody could ever doubt the love of God because Christ laid down his life for us. We can't doubt that at all. But dear Lord, yeah, for one reason or the other, we have strayed and we have detoured. Yes, and uh, we have been far apart. We do ask dear God for forgiveness. And I pray today that the fire would begin to burn again in Jesus' name. With our love for Jesus and for those who are married, their Father, I pray that that fire would be rekindled, that we will have um, that love that we once had for our spouses, dear Lord. Yes, I know sometimes, Lord, having children, it takes a, it takes a toll on the marriage because the attention is taken away from each other and is given to the children. Sometimes I know men feel that they're pretty, they're robbed of that. Some women feel that they're pretty robbed of, of, of that, their Lord. And then our whole life seem to be around the children and so on, and we neglect, we neglect each, each other. But the children leave that house. They leave the house, and then what we do? We sit down and we don't talk no more. We sit down and that's, that's it. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, the fire will rekindle in marriages as well. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now we Pasad, we're going to pray for, for that person right now, a COVID patient. Would you join with me in these prayer requests that have come in uh, from the house and uh, from our live broadcast right now? Father, we pray, dear Lord, for beloved and, and now we Pasad. COVID patient, their Lord. I pray God that your healing would be upon that person in the name of Jesus. That COVID, the power would be broken. The whole, the chains would be broken. And healing would be given. Father, we thank you for Carol. Let's pray for her son, uh, Romeo. Um, healing. Got a cut and received stitches. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, dear Lord, that all would be well. Healing will take place, complete healing, in the name of the Lord. Thank you, God, for Romeo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe it wasn't too long that he made a decision for Jesus Christ to bless you. 
We pray also, dear Lord, for my mother, dear Lord, for healing and strength. She's been having a difficult time. She was one of those that never, never missed a service. But dear Lord, she is uh, up in that age, dear, dear Father, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis is a main challenge, anxiety as well too. And we pray that you would heal and restore. It'd be a joy to see her and some of the older soldiers, amen, back in the house of the Lord. We also lift up Sister Marina, prayer for her cousins, Nisha in Florida. Doctors has given up on her. They say nothing can be done. But that's when Jesus comes in. Hallelujah. When man goes out, he comes in. Praise God. When man says no, he says yes. When man says it is impossible, God says it is possible. Glory to God. You raise the dead, dear Lord. And we lift up, dear Lord Jesus, uh, Nisha in Florida. Dear Lord, that your hand will be upon her this moment, this minute, as we are praying, dear Lord, and bring deliverance. Most importantly, if they don't know Christ, we pray that it will come to know Jesus. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory in hearing our prayer in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand this morning. Oh, bless the Lord. I want to invite uh, right away uh, the parents uh, of Kena Christian Robinson together with all the witnesses. Uh, if you could please step forward right now and come and face me at the altar. All right, bringing the baby, of course, as we now dedicate this beautiful child unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They are coming. Glory to God.
beautiful, beautiful song. And I know the family here. That you are singing of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Good to see you guys. Hallelujah. I did the, the wedding. Amen. Some time ago. And God has blessed you guys so richly. Amen. Hallelujah. Today God has given to them a handsome son. Amen. Glory to God. Eden Christian Ram. Ratan Singh, amen, hallelujah. Are you related to the Ratan Singh Dong Shabbat? <laughs> amen, praise God. Uh, let us get the names of the uh, parents again, proper, proper names. Oh yes, Damitra. We didn't put all the uh, put the names of the parents that they could assign them. So we have Damitra and your wife. Oh yeah, Kipla. Damitra and Kipla. You have to forgive me because I do so many weddings and, and so forth to remember everybody. Glory to God. And to have three witnesses with you all today. Uh, what's your name, sis? Short, short. Sean, oh Sean Adam Singh, oh wonderful, all right, glory to God, so your family, yes, brother, uncle, lovely sis, Chelsea, oh wonderful, and sister, your name, Asha, God bless you, thank you for standing up with the Mindra here and uh, the, this morning in the baby's dedication, God bless you, amen. And so before we have the prayer, I just want to mention to you a couple of things about dedication. First, it is to give thanks to the Lord. Kitla, yes, the mindra, for the birth of your baby. And uh, secondly, it is making a solemn promise that uh, as parents and as witnesses as, as well, that uh, you are going to teach Christian. You're going to teach him the Bible. Teach him to love Jesus. Yes. It's a promise that you're going to grow up this child. Just as Ephesians 6 1 says. Parents, bring him up. Alright? Bring him up in the fear and the admonition of God. So you're giving thanks, number one. And you're making a promise. You're making a promise, number two. And the third place, we are to pray for the blessings of God upon this child. There are many evils out there. It's a duty of parents to pray for your children. Pray that God will protect them and preserve them and the witnesses as well. Every day, guys, as you are standing as a witness today, remember Christian in your prayer. Offer a prayer for him that God will continue to keep him and pray for the, the parents as well. I know you guys are going to shower Christian with all the love in your heart that you have for this boy. Amen. I expect that you'll be also bringing gifts on birthdays and things like that. Uh, yes, and, and helping out wherever you can today. But we acknowledge uh, the Vintra, we acknowledge you guys, your faith in Christ this morning. So church, would you join with me as we dedicate uh, Christian uh, to the Lord. that stand here today. It's a joy, dear Lord, to see that you have blessed them, our brother, our sister. Their father, after they, they were united in the bonds of all the natural money, out of that love, dear Lord, here is a, a child that you have given. I know the joy that Elkanah, I know the joy, dear Lord, that Anna experienced, the joy of Mary and Joseph that they experienced. And out of that joy, another gratitude, 
they brought the children. They brought them into the house of the Lord to have them dedicated, dear Father, to have your blessings upon them. And thank you, dear Lord, for Christian today. Praise God. We pray, dear Lord, that your blessings will be upon him. Keep him, protect him from all evil. That he will grow in wisdom and understanding, dear Father. Divine favor will be upon this child. Through this child, dear Lord, as you carry your coming, that many others will be drawn. Today, Christian has brought with him Asha. He has brought with him the Rotten Sin family. He has brought with him others, dear Lord, to the house of God here at Cowan Science Ministries. Already that you are using Christian for your honor and glory. By through his life, dear Lord, that others are getting an opportunity to hear the gospel of our Savior Jesus. And I pray, dear Lord, that you continue to use him to bring more and more people, dear Lord, to the knowledge of Jesus and to make a decision for Christ, dear Father. Still, the COVID is still wrong. We know, dear Lord, that it is failing. Hallelujah. We give your praise to that. It is losing its strength. It is losing its power. And Lord, we give you glory and honor for that. But Lord, while it still exists, we do pray, dear Lord, for protection upon this child, protection upon his family, dear Lord Jesus. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will always be with him, dear Father. Watch over with your angels, dear Lord. Always keep him safe, dear Lord. And that you will grow up to be an outstanding, outstanding young man, a young soldier for Jesus Christ. Bless my brother Davindra and his dear wife, Caitlin. Dear Lord, as they work and as they take care of their, their son, we will continue to give him grace. And we know that the, the, the grandparents, they are so proud as well. May you bless them, their father. In Jesus' name, as we dedicate him for your honor and for your glory. Amen. Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Put your hands together. We have now our newest dedicated baby. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we have another baby who will be going on in our church's history and books. God bless you, wonderful parents. And I want to encourage you to come as often as you come. Asha, you all come as often as you come. And so forth. We want to see the Addy Sunday School. So, my children, we have here this morning. They just went to Sunday School class. Look at them, look at how many things they got. See what they're learning? Yes, learning about Jesus and whatnot. So we want Christian to be the same as well too. God bless you. We go to the signing of the certificate. Amen. While the song leader comes, so let's all stand and close up. You'll see you all this evening, 6 30 for the evening service. Bring somebody, alright? So the witness is all come to the table. And uh, Anna will help you all with the signing as the song leaders come. Yes. But Anna, oh she is the song leader. Amen. All right, don't worry guys, we'll sign a gesture now, amen.